Alright, let's talk about the solidify modifier and for that I'm going to add a torus and then I'm just going to cut it in half. So it's like an open pipeline or something. And also I'm going to leave these vertices. Alright. And uh, smooth. Good. So uh, this is a pipeline or something, a curve from a sewer, I don't know but it looks really two-dimensional so easiest solution get the solidify modifier going and so we can see it more clearly I'm going to um, increase the thickness and you can immediately see what that does and uh, then I've got a couple of options for example I can press even thickness the even thickness will try to calculate the same thickness for sharp corners as it, ha as it does for the um, normal or rounder parts. Thing is, if you click this, computing time will increase a bit, but um, you don't necessarily see it anytime you use it. So um, most of these options, just uh, turn them on and turn them off and see if you see a difference. If you don't, leave them off, those two, because they just increase computing time and they don't much as I said the, in some certain situations I'm not exactly sure in which those will improve your mesh just try checking them unchecking them and see what happens okay of course you can limit this to a vertex group and then there is the crease option if I increase the crease nothing happens and that is because the crease is only affecting a subsequent subsurf modifier. So if I put a subsurf modifier underneath and I increase the inner crease, you can see the inner edge gets a bit more uh, sharp. It gets sharpened. If I do the same for the outer, you can see that the outer edge gets sharpened as well. So, And if I do this for the rim, you can see where this cut is, the corner gets a lot sharper as well. So you can see these are the same options as the options you get in the N menu, the mean crease, except for they are dynamic, which is awesome. So um, this is a good start, but I'm going to assign a couple of materials to this. I'm going to make this green, assign a second material, I'll make this red, and a third one, I'm going to make this blue. So in these materials now have slot IDs. This is slot number one, slot number two, slot number three. That is important because I can now set the material offset to be one. And that means that slot one is going to be used for the outer, for the original vertices. Slot number two, that's the offset of one, is going to be used for the inner vertices. And I can also select the rim to have its own material. So this way I think I have to set the rim offset 1. Okay, now the original vertices have slot number 1, the inner vertices have slot number 3 because I have an offset of 2 and the rim has an offset of 1 so it has number 2. So just add 1 to this number and the and of course the original will always be slot number one. Now this is a very very handy feature and um, normally I only discuss one modifier but the solidify modifier just goes hand in hand with one other modifier that is really cool and it used to be not as awesome because it used to be a lot less powerful. So I'm going to assign a um, particle system to it and you can see if I you can see nothing's happening okay for some reason my animation player doesn't do anything if I press alt a I don't see any frames moving that's new so um, I'll restart blender okay I have no idea what happened there uh, now it's working I just restarted so I'm going to add this particle system and I'm going to uh, let's make it clean so I'm also going to insert this plane okay I want the particles to sort of shoot out okay and then fall on the plane okay so for that I'm going to have to give the plane a collision and those particles are a bit intense
tens, let's put this to four, that should do. And I'm going to increase the stickiness and the damping and the friction a lot. Now you can see they sort of stick where they land. Okay, now that I have a particle system on the monkey, this is necessary to get the explosion modifier working. So I'm going to put the explosion modifier over here. I'm getting a little ahead of myself. This is one of the last ones I wanted to discuss. I have to put it beneath the particle system. If I don't, nothing will happen. So you can see right now, m uh, Suzanne is exploding slowly, so it's kind of killing her softly. Um, so I want the animation to be only the particles to start at frame 1 and end at frame 2. And also I want a lot of randomness in this. Where are the physics settings? There they are. Just increase the random. Okay, you can see that now a lot of stuff is going on. I'm not going to worry about the physics because this is mainly about the modifier. If you want something to explode, you probably don't want the halos rendered, so just click on None here. And if we watch this animation now, it explodes and the parts are um, rotating nicely. And um, in the Explode modifier, I'm going to select Cut Edges, which will make even smaller chunks. And that's about it for these options. Okay, now let's pretend Suzanne was made of glass. So I'm going to add a material that is glass. And just to show you, I'm going to make this blue. And then I'm going to make a material that I'll call rim. Because if you have a look at a glass shard, the rim will seem a lot darker. And this is due to refraction and physical options which Blender internal render cannot handle. So easiest solution is just to make the glass rim a bit darker and it sometimes appears even greenish. So um, of course I'm not going to play around with the transparency setting because I'm not going to render it but that would be the glad settings if Suzanne was made out of glass shards and now um, we can see that these shards look really fake because they are only two-dimensional. They have no depth, and so I'm going to just add a solidify modifier, and you can see they gain depth, and you can even adjust the thickness of these shards as they fly. I mean, I could I could uh, animate this even, but um, I mean the solidify modifier is dynamic, so it will no matter what modifier is stacked on top, it will react accordingly. So. Now I want my rim material to be offset of 1, and you can see my glass shards now have a darker rim than the glass material they are supposed to be made of. And this is actually capable of creating some pretty nice explosions, because now the shards are actually 3D.